Hey guys, Khalid from Cricket Fanatics Magazine here again with another episode of the Lockdown series. I know guys, it's been quite a long time since we had another episode. Um, we've been doing a lot of new projects like, you know, with Legends of Ravi, etc. And the podcast show on a Sunday evening. So there's a lot of different things that we were busy with. So sorry that we kept you so long. But what a nice comeback to make. Uh, we're bringing Marcus Ackerman on the show. So welcome to the show, Marcus. Nice to be on it. Thanks. <laughs> That's cool, man. So I'm going to start off like I start every episode. And this is just about lockdown first and foremost. Um, from a cricketing perspective, um, I'll, I like to give some tips to younger guys or guys out there that are struggling to keep busy during this time. Um, for you, um, well, what have you been doing from a, from a cricket perspective or from a fitness perspective? Um, it's been quite difficult to do, you know, uh, skill-based things. Um, yeah. But it's been quite nice doing, uh, working on my fitness because you can always do uh, simple things. You don't really need weights and stuff to do um, various exercises to keep fit. So yeah. I've just been like, you know, I've been fortunate enough to run now during the lockdown um, on the farm. So that's helped a lot. And then cool. now during six and nine in the morning, so if you just do some running and then do some body, you know, body strength exercises such as lunges, squats, push-ups, mm -hmm. sit-ups, stuff like that. Yeah, and with regards to cricket, is there anything that you can do as a batsman? I mean, we've seen stuff like um, Steve Smith doing shadow batting and we know about um, Bradman using a wicket or a stump to bat. Uh, what sort of things do you do? Uh, have you been doing anything with regards to cricket? Yeah, so just regards to cricket, I've done lots of like hand and eye coordination stuff. So tennis ball, juggling against the wall. Um, and then just, yeah, just pretty much shadow batting. Just itching to get back and just do some batting or you know, doing some skills. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. So um, let's go into the, the best part of the show. And that's me getting to know you a lot more and a lot better. Um, especially your journey and, and where it all started for you. Because obviously you know that the name of the channel is Cricket Fanatics. And... You guys are the biggest fanatics out there because you dedicate your life to cricket. So it would have started for you as a fan first, I assume. So how did you get introduced to cricket? Um, what was the first cricket match you watched or something that got you into the game? Um, I pretty much grew up uh, in a cricket uh, circuit. My parents and them ran uh, uh, action cricket, uh, action sports arena. Um so I grew up, you know, watching people play action sports or cricket at that stage. And I was only little. And my, but um, my fondest memory would probably be my dad just throwing to me all the time in the, in the living room and things like that. Um, but I think the biggest thing is my uncle played a bit for Boerland um, back in the day, Armand Fenter. Uh, so he was pretty much the talk of the town for us as a family, playing uh, someone playing professional cricket at the time. So that pretty much just was a bit of a highlight when I was small or low, you know, drive to, to become a cricketer. And with regard, and when was the first time you played? Um, was it was it action cricket first? Yeah, I used to just always, when everyone's done playing for the evenings, I used to just get everyone that was there, was mates of my dad and my mom, and they just used to throw balls at me all night. So I used to just bat and keep and play cricket the whole night uh, so I was, I was quite quite fun and i can actually quite, i can remember it pretty well so it's pretty cool yeah that's awesome man so um when it came to school obviously that's probably where cricket really started getting serious for you um did you start also like the same as everybody else with regards to starting red ball cricket in grade four grade three grade four yeah so i used to obviously play primary i used to be obviously in a primary afrikaans primary school and um i used to play a, a few age groups above of what I was. So I think I was, was grade one. I played for the under nines. So I was two, two years ahead. So mm. I played hardball cricket as I started primary school, uh, where everyone wow. else was playing softball cricket. So mm. that was obviously an advantage because then I was exposed to the hardball, redball cricket, but at a bit earlier, uh, earlier stage. Um, but yeah, I started at uh, Dr. Avanha, which is a, Afrikaans school in the West End, and then I went to another school in grade five called Wurisson Law School. Yeah, and what was it like there playing um, hard cricket? Um, obviously, how many there was? Well, how many teams were there? Were there only one team with that schools or? Um, no, we had obviously had various teams, A, B teams um, oh, indeed, okay, cool. at each each age group. Um, but back then it was only rugby. Everyone just wanted to play rugby. <laughs> as an African school. So you see, rugby was all of it. And then 
obviously my passion for cricket was quite high. So um, I used to just pretty much have all my mates and all my teams most of the time. Um, but yeah, you know, it was <laughs> can't really remember too much of what happened. But uh, it was it was good. I can remember playing like a few night games in uh, grade five, six, and seven. We had like a local um, district tournament. We had uh, various like first team tournaments um at a school called Haldecrane Law School where we played a, a night series. Um that's pretty much the highlight of my primary school. Okay, awesome. That's that's awesome. So obviously we all know that when you go into high school that was kind of when you your claim to fame in a way. I'm going to study in such a massive school um with the likes of KG Rabada and you know Buzz Pickleton and so many guys that alumni that have come through that system via Mulder as well. So talk to me about your high school career and what cricket was like for you there. We know that they are massive cricket school as well. Yeah, going to going to high school or to Saints, which was obviously uh, an awesome school and uh, you know, I can't uh, I can't say anything bad about it. I mean it was an amazing experience. Um, from grade eight all the way through to boarding house and then obviously playing first team cricket mm. and being able to captain it and we won a couple of T20 schools tournaments um, played with Vian and KG and Rickleton and Vasconcelos um, I've heard quite a few guys I was probably just mentioning a few um, yeah. and they're all awesome players we had a, quite, a, quite a mean team from grade eight all the way to matric yeah. so I think we only lost I think in first team level, we only lost, I think, a handful of games. So it was quite a quite a cool experience to be part of a, a team that was quite quite uh, dominant. Yeah, and you said you were captain. Or were you a captain for most of the age groups or only first team? Um, yeah, most age groups and then only towards the end of grade 11 and matric. Okay, cool. Awesome. So you you played with KG, for example. What was it like to captain a guy like him? Um, and you, Everybody wants to know what he was like at school. <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't think I was his captain at school. I can't actually remember. But I do remember just playing with him. And he was just always much better than everyone else, to be honest. He didn't take he didn't take much wickets or many wickets because he was just too quick for the guys. He used to just beat the bat all the time. Um, but yeah, he was he was just special even from a young age or from 16 years old. Yeah, I mean, that's something that I picked up when going to Kaimajola Weeks when I saw guys like Jero Kutsia, Leaf and Tanzi, those dudes bowl at players and they were just too good they too quick and people just beat the battle the time they didn't get a lot of wickets maybe but um sometimes they did majority of the time they did but i mean to the extent that people would think that they would get so it's, it's quite interesting to know that what was the highlight of your of your studying days as a cricketer um for you um like i briefly said uh it was probably on my on my debut game for the first team um mm -hmm. Oh, not my debut, sorry, for the, I think it's the 12th game or the 10th game. I can't actually remember. I remember getting my white cap. Um, you know, you play with a blue one if you start and you, on your 12th cap, I think you get a white cap. Um, oh, okay, cool. And I remember on my, the day I got my white cap, I got 100. Sure. Uh, my first one for school. So that was quite cool. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, it's probably just winning, uh, winning the T20 schools two years in a row. I think that's yeah. probably the highlight. That was, that was proper. That's awesome. And um, obviously, you would have played for Gauteng then at the beginning before obviously moving over to KZN and the Dolphins, etc. Um, talk about your Gauteng, time with Gauteng, um, what it was like to come through the system and what conversations you had with certain coaches that really made an impact on your career in that early stage. Look, I, I, I never played for the Gauteng senior team, but I did play mm -hmm. for obviously age groups and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I worked with some really good coaches. Um, I had the privilege to work with Ryan Cook under 17 that obviously played a big role and then I moved on I was lucky enough to have Bongani in Daba who was at our oh. school at the time and he was probably the guy that invested the most hours at that time my you know little yeah. school career um, you know from playing shooting me balls in the mornings and making me run heels and batting when I'm tired and everything you know he's probably the most influential coach in the Gauteng mm -hmm. system that worked with me um, from under 17 to under 19 level. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much. And then I obviously played uh, Coke Week, which was Sandile yeah. uh, Masangemi. And um, they they were obviously 
obviously someone I worked with and you know outside school doors which uh, obviously you know threw a lot of balls at me and obviously helped me technical or you know tech with my technique and other things I suppose in cricket yeah so obviously like you said you never played for the senior hunting team and um, obviously a lot of people that come from that region that's a dream of theirs but you made a bold move to move over quite young actually to go to play for Kaiser in um can you tell me about so, so I actually went to play for Northwest. I went and studied at Northwest University for yeah. three years, and okay, I played cool. for for the Northwest senior team. Okay, uh, awesome. So yeah, I played with the likes of Jan Man Milan, his brother Andre, um, Vian Lebe, um who else? Uh, Bjorn Fortein. So we played yeah. we quite a Rassi van der Dessen. They all played Nicky van der Berg. They all played at Northwest at that time. Okay, that's awesome. See, Holly, do your research sometimes. You know, I just wanted to go with the conversation. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I was going to talk to talk to you about Northwest, and I was trying to figure out the the, the timeline exactly of when it was. Obviously, Kaiser had to be the last because you're playing for the Dolphins. But Northwest, yeah. obviously, massive team. Um, we all know that. Um, obviously, you said playing with those the likes of those guys. Um, now you've seen them as opponents, but. For you, with regards to Northwest, what would have been the highlight for you there? Um, did you find that playing the longer format or the shorter format really that you that that you got more success in? What would you say? Um, it's quite a tough one because when I started off, um, I only played a few white ball games for okay. Northwest, um, and then when I played red ball cricket, when I eventually got my made my debut in red ball cricket, I. I had a really poor start in first loss cricket. I think I only averaged like 11 in my first six games or something like that. So I, I didn't have a great start. Um, but just Northwest as a whole and, you know, what it did for my career was massive. Um, first, there was the opportunity to play, um, uh, you know, under the our coach was Monty Jacobs. And uh, he was he was a bit of a different coach to what people would be used to. Um but I think the, the biggest thing he taught us was, was uh, you know, he always backed us no matter how, how we played, if that was defensive, attacking or whatever. But he's, his way it was to always um, play to win. And he, he really got the best out of each player. He, he not the, a massive technical coach, but uh, definitely uh, good for backing your skills and, you know, getting the best out of each player. He, he, he was quite class. Yeah. Um, so mentally, what would you go through? through when you were when you went through that dip you said at the beginning and the start how did you overcome that and um, what sort of mental techniques did you go through or what sort of advice did you take or what advice were you given um it was weird because it was i think i probably i probably just didn't things just didn't really click at that time um probably a bit nervous trying to you know trying in and out the team trying to prove yourself um mm. And I, I think my biggest change then was I, I had a good academy week um, where I then got selected to go into the National Academy yeah. where I worked with um, Shukri Conrad and he was then on a whole different level for me because he helped me, you know, mentally in terms of my game and backing my process and, you know, figuring out how I was going to play because I was, I was just too confused if I'm playing attacking or defensive or however I was, I was struggling, you know, at the moment, uh, at that time, at the end of the season. And then I went to the National Academy and I came back and then I scored 100 in my first Red Bull game, first game of the season. So it was, it was quite, quite a, a roller coaster ride, but he probably helped me the most in terms of mentally. I never think it was a skill thing, uh, pro yeah. very immature, in the way I played, but I think we all had the, the bit of flair or the just, you know, raw talent, if you want to put it that way. And yeah. and he just helped me structure it better and just figure out how I was going to play at that level. Um, so yeah, he, that's yeah. pretty much it. <laughs> so, yeah, because, I mean, I was going to bring that up later because me and Shukri have a lot of chats. I love to talk to him about who's the next big thing, etc. And I remember fondly back then, I'm chatting to him and he and he mentioned your name and he said just look just have a look out for him as a, because for me as a journalist I'm always looking for the next new talent and the young talent coming through the system and I always like to look at guys that have a, that have a different mentality and you always spoke about you and your attitude and the way you played and the way you approach cricket so yeah you actually mentioned it over there of what he's done for you as a as a coach 
Um, but with regards to, you said the mental game, are there specific techniques that you can maybe share that, that he would give you or some, how did he manage to give you that confidence mentally? Oh, to be honest, just a couple of years ago now, but I think what he taught us was to back whatever you, or whatever's got you to where you are now, you, it's just to really back that process. And I mean, it is very difficult when you are going through, if it's a TV game or, um, you know, the pressures of having a contract or not, or the pressures of being in the team. If I fail, do I, am I going to be in the team next week or the next game? Um, so I think there's all those, all those variables in the game. And I think he just simplified it to that. None of those things really matter if you, if you can't, um, if you, if you can't really put the runs on the board. So no matter how you, how you do it, if you, if, if you're putting runs on the board, people can't really, you know, overlook you. Um, I think he just, um, my, my way of playing at that time was very um, high risk, if I can put it that way. Yeah. And um, I think a lot of people had their various opinions on how I was playing, um, about it being risky and getting out and all that. And I think he just, he, he just enjoyed it. And he, he, and he just, he just made me feel like that was important. And not, you don't want to be like everyone else. You want to be different. And I think he yeah. just backed that at that stage, and and I just I just you know I think that I I just worked well with him, and he just because he was backing my ability or the way I was playing at that time, it just brought the best out of me. So I ended up you know doing it exactly the way he did it, and or, or you know what me and him would chat about, and uh, yeah, I just think he just backed me at that stage, and I probably needed someone to just back the way I played to for me to find a, a middle of how to play if it was attacking or a bit more responsible at times and yeah. but yeah I think it was a, a lot of a lot of a lot of teaching or a lot of a lot of advice that was given mentally and and how to approach the game um and not to really slack off uh, or be around the bush and just to get straight yeah. to the point and and that the main thing was just to make runs yeah, I think that's probably the most important thing to, uh, to give to a teaching to a youngster. Uh, guys, I see a lot of your comments are coming in. We're going to ask him the questions a little bit later. Um, we're just going to get into the journey a little bit more. So obviously going over to KZN, becoming obviously the player of the season for them um, and, and as well playing for the Dolphins or formats as well. Tell me about that journey and your reasons behind the, the move and then what it has been like since, since then. Um, I obviously made my debut for the Lions in, in the Ramslam, I think it was three years ago now, I'm not sure. Yeah, what, yeah I think it was three years ago. Um, I then, I then got to a stage where I, I just didn't really see that there was much happening for me on that side. Um, there was a lot of good players at that time that were playing for the Lions. Um, yeah. And I, I just I got an opportunity, I saw a little gap for me on this side. Um, in KZN and I thought you know I was ready for a change you know just to I don't know it was just the heat of the moment it was a couple of days where I decided you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna make a move there. And, you know CEO Heinrich Stratum came to me and he's like listen we've, we would like you to be here and uh, we can we see a future for you and I thought you know what um, there's some poor communications from where I was at the moment uh and the high felt, so I thought, you know what, let me let me make the move. Um, and it was and it was very beneficial to me. Um, just I uh, was working at that stage when I moved to KZ, and I was working with Roger Telemarcus and our assistant coach Doc Zulu. Mm. And um, we had we had a really good team because a lot of the guys that are that have played for South Africa now said Nero Mutasami, Calvin Savage, Darren Dupavillon, Keith Dajin, those Oaks were all those guys were all playing at the stage for the co coastal team. And we had a really good team, and we ended up winning the three-day competition. Um, the season I moved, um, I then obviously got. I was fortunate enough to to play a few games for the Dolphins. Um, the end of that, the end of that, the year um, where I was working with Grant Morgan, um, and yeah, you know, and just get a, get a taste of the Dolphins of franchise cricket really at that stage because I was quite I was quite young when I just made my debut, and I wasn't really ready to be honest. Um, and then, yeah, when I got the opportunity, um, obviously tried to just, it was just so nice to play at that level. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to turn back. I didn't want to go back down to the, to the semi-pro system. So I just wanted to really make sure I put in performances and I just really wanted it badly. So I just tried to obviously 
make as much runs as I can and just contribute as much as I could at that yeah. stage. Of course, yeah. And obviously, I um, had a great season last season. I'm a very young team. I feel that going forward now with the new new signings that you guys have made, etc. And um, I want to ask you about that because if you look around the provinces and you look around the, the different franchises at the moment, uh, South Africa is in a very delicate phase at the moment with regards to franchise cricket and uh, the revolutions that's happening in the, in the national team as well as in the franchise level. Where a lot of the senior guys are retiring and the younger guys now to take more of the leadership roles. Um, can you maybe talk to me about that with regards to your role in the, at the Dolphins and who you get along with well in the side? Um, the Dolphins went through a bit of a, trans, a transition of between a couple of senior men leaving um, yeah. and then obviously a couple changes, new guys coming in now. Um, I think with a new coach, I think Imran Khan has been outstanding for us um, with the, with um, Doozy and our uh, assistant coach Quentin um he's been they've been outstanding for us I mean we we wanted to create create a new culture at the Dolphins um we wanted to co start competing at the at the highest level make sure instead of just you know instead of us just all having in, individual performances we wanted to start performing as a team and we start wanted to create a culture where we can start winning and compete to win trophies and uh Yes, we were a young team, and in the start of the season, the first few games were quite tough, and we wanted to find our, that identity of the Dolphins and try to get back to, to a, you know, a competitive environment. And you know, I I, th I think that I get get on pretty well with every single player in our team. Um, you know, I try to reach out as much as I can. It's not always easy. We have uh, various uh, ages in our team and various cultures in our team, so it's difficult to obviously. Um, you know, uh, be friends with everyone on a personal level. But uh, I think in a team environment, our, the, the relationships I have with uh, most of the players are, are pretty good. Mm. Cool. So I want to get to know a little bit more about your style of batting and obviously um, the way you approach your batting, etc. And what what makes you special on the field, etc. So I thought I'm going to bring on a buddy to help me out. So how's it, Grant? Uh, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how's it, Rafi? How you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, good, eh? How are you? <laughs> yeah, good. good yeah, so like the last time I was going to do this in reverse, um, <laughs> but uh, it didn't really work out. Marcus was quite busy that day. So um, I thought I'll do it now in return to you. And now we can have a nice discussion about um, you guys. Obviously, Grant, you would have been in situations when um, you batting or and you stay in and there's a wicket that falls. You're opening, use your opening partner, and this guy will come walk into out in the middle. Um, talk to me about him as a batsman and what makes him special, and then afterwards you can go into some of the questions that you maybe have for him. Um, I think uh, Marcus's best attributes is probably he's so commanding. You know what I mean? Like you, I know he's a little guy, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> You know, he has he has a real big presence about him when he walks the streets. So I think that's probably his main attribute. Um, I wouldn't say he's carefree. I think people get that wrong. I don't think he's a carefree batter. I think he really values the way he bats. He values his wicket. He values the amount of runs he puts on the board. Um, so I wouldn't call him carefree, but he is... Uh, he plays a few more shots than most, but... I think it's calculated. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, Marcus, for you as well, um, batting with him in the team, okay, you guys are quite young, but you guys have obviously had to mature a lot quicker. Um, um, Grant also making that move and that understanding between the two of you, you get that, you'll have that similar understanding, basically. So, what have you learned from Grant and vice versa, Grant? What have you learned from Marcus? But we'll start with Marcus. Um. We've grown up together. We've played a lot of cricket together. We've played a lot of cricket against each other. So um, it's, we, our relationship's pretty good. Um, and I think it's it's not just on the field, our relationship. So it's been quite a growing relationship since we were kids. So I think our understanding and the way of playing. And I think our goal's always been to try get to the very top level of cricket. And, uh, and you know, since we were small, we used to train together and train hard. And I think that was, that's been the main thing. So I think when, when, when I walk into bats and he's at the crease and I'll tell you what, I've seen, I've seen him grow as a player 
um, so much in a very short space of time as well. And I think, I mean, I, I remember just, just sitting off the top of my head watching him bat at Centurion against the Titans in a, in the Wonder game where he got 140-odd, I think, not out. And oh, it was class watching it from, from the top there. I can't remember shouting um, so loud in a long time. So it was pretty good to watch. And I mean, just batting with him, he's such a calm and collected person. He's, he's always been uh, uh, that type of player as well. He doesn't really um, talk a lot or... Um, you know, get 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 outside that box of his. He knows his game plan pretty well, and uh, he sticks to that. And I remember going to him in one of the games, asking him, uh, "What does he think about the shot? Does it should I should I play it?" And he just said, "Hey, bat, you do what you need to do." You know, and I think and that's important. Sometimes you need someone to, you know, that's with you. You know, t- just keep keeps you keeps you on your toes, tells you what to do, in terms of you backing your processes. And I think same for him. I think, uh, you know. Uh, for, you know, playing together now at the at the Dolphins, and obviously you said we we needed to mature a little bit quicker. I think mm-hmm. we've just found a way um, past the whole being young because you know there's no there's no young really. You have to you have to put runs on the board or else the next person's in. So we've just decided that we're going to lead from the front. If that's if that's you know with batting, setting an example, making runs or whatever it is. So we just we just want to make sure that we, um, you know, uh, because we bat top order. If we can set the tone, it really sets the tone for our team. And Grant, you, I mean, obviously, what have you learned from from Marcus? Yeah, uh, I just want to like jump on what Marcus said as well. As I think uh, if you're good enough, you should be old enough. You know, I mean, it shouldn't really matter your age. If you're a batter in the team, you need to get runs. If you're a bowler, you need to get wickets. So. You know, I don't don't really feel like we've ever had to be young guys in the team. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with what he said there. And then that uh, yeah, just uh, like on Marcus, I think he's such an energetic character when he bats, especially when he bats. Um, you know, he brings a lot of energy to the crease, and he brings that extra intensity, um, which I think as a more calmer guy, you need that, you know, you need to be able to feed off things like that. Um, because uh, it's it's almost, sometimes it can be a bit of a bad thing to almost sink too far into your bubble that you, you know, lack a bit of intensity. Um, and Marcus always brings that extra intensity, um, whether he's batting, whether he's in the field, um, in the change room, he always brings that little bit of extra enthusiasm. Um, yeah, and then I mean, I suppose he's he's played a lot of cricket. Uh, you know, he's been into the national academy and uh, all these sorts of things as well. So to feed off him, um, he's been in different circles. You know, he played MSL. He's played with some big name players, um, which I haven't actually done. So to be able to feed off that knowledge as well is, I mean, it's my age, but it feels like he's more knowledgeable about the game than me. So. Yeah. Uh, it feels like he's been around longer than me, so it's uh, it's nice to be friends with someone like that. Yeah, and is there anything maybe you want to ask him? Any question that you might have not gotten to ask him yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'd love to know what goes on in his head sometimes. <laughs> uh, I'll share. I'll share. I'll share a little funny moment with with Grant. We played a we played a four day game against uh, the Cobras, um, and we uh, we were batting together. We had about eighty or ninety, probably a hundred partnership together. Yeah. And uh, on quite a quite a difficult wicket. It was quite. It was turning. It was quite dry. We played in Oats winning. Um and I remember get. I think Grant was about sixty. I was about sixty five. Right? And uh, I remember saying to him at the end of the over, I was like, "Listen, uh, it's just gonna, uh, you know." Pato's coming back onto bowl, and I remember saying to him, let's just knuckle down a little bit. It's the best bowler. Let's just, you know, see him through, and then we'll cash in later. And I remember the very first ball, he bowled a, a back of a length, quite shortish, and I, I, tr- I, I just tapped it back, and I thought, ah, I was a loose now. I could probably take him down, yeah. 
Um, and the second ball, I thought he'd he just look to pitch it up a little bit. And I just ran down the wicket. I tried to wake it over mid wicket. I got a top edge and I got caught him it off. And I remember him standing on the other side then, and he just, just shook his head. And he's just like, What are you doing? And I just did the total opposite thing of what I said to him just two balls before. So, so yeah, there's been some very interesting things that go up in the set or goes up in the set. Yeah, it's beautiful. But I think that's just like, you know, you're going to take that up with a smooth. Um, so, I, but that's just testament to who he is. You know, like he doesn't, it doesn't matter to him that there was a guy that's just made a test debut. You know, it doesn't matter to him. He knows how he wants to play cricket. And, you know, like he got 65. I know he probably, I mean, he didn't get out there. Maybe he goes on and gets a big 100. But, you know, for, for him, he needs to take the rough with this move of it. And it's, like I say, it's a testament to who he is. It's, he comes off, he gets a big 100, we win the game. He's a match winner. He's a match winner. That's bloody awesome. So, Marcus, anything you want to ask Grant? Because you, you missed the last time, your opportunity, the last time to do it. So, anything you want to ask him? Careful now. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. I, I don't have to ask him, but he's already told me. So, so we're working on my back lift, and he's been helping with my back lift. So, <laughs> he's got the best back lift I've seen in a long time. So, we're trying to, we're trying to, trying to imitate his batting technique a little bit. <laughs> And we can't have a lot time to finish because we just want to have a bride. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it, man. I just want to play some golf. <laughs> oh, and the golf. Can we... Oh, my goodness. Too many things. <laughs> it's going to be like a massive binge of stuff we're going to do. You're going to get... <laughs> it's not going to meet Coma and a golf Coma all at once now. Is it difficult to teach, um, Grant? Or is it, is it quite easy to teach this guy? <laughs> Yeah, no, he's he's a listener. He's a listener. He's definitely he's teachable. He's coachable. He is stubborn. But uh, I just I like to voice my opinion. I think. Okay. <laughs> no, he is he's definitely coachable. But yes, he he is opinionated. Uh, that's good. He's a strong mind. He's a strong character. It makes him a leader. Awesome man. Shout out to Ron for coming on. Um, I no really enjoyed that. Um, I will chat no to you again soon. And thank you for doing this. Take care, guys. Cheers, Rolf. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, so Marcus, that gives me a whole new different insight into, into you as a person and as you as a player. But I picked that up, what he's saying over there. Um, the type of player that you are, you like to take risks, etc. but calculate the risks. I got to see that firsthand a lot more because I only used to get to watch you play when the Dolphins played the Cobras over here, for example. And then that was the only chances I really got to watch you you play. So um, when you when you signed with the Blitz, I was quite excited about that. So I was like, awesome, now I get to watch you play a lot more. And um, I got a lot of us and a lot of the fans took to you very quickly and became quick became fans of you quite quickly. And you became a fan favorite immediately, almost instantly. So tell me about that, um, when you got that, that signature, because we know you were signed first to the, I think it was the Durban uh, team when the Global T20 was supposed to happen and then it didn't happen. And that must have been a massive blow for you to overcome and then you finally get in your Zanzi Super League contract. Um, talk to me about that and what that experience has been like, playing against some of the best players in the world. Yeah, I think when I was bought, I was very surprised. I didn't obviously expect it. Um, especially not Cape Town. I didn't didn't really expect uh, to get picked up at, with the with the Blitz. Um, and then when I when I when I obviously got all the phone calls and everyone's like because I wasn't really watching it. And then I got all these phone calls that I'm I got bought for the Blitz team. And uh, I looked. I remember going online or whatever it was. I can't even remember. And I remember seeing the team. <laughs> and I, we had such a good team. I was like, okay, well. At least I'm, I'm going to be carrying drinks for for a whole month. So that's, that's going to be pretty exciting. And I, I mean, but just just in a nutshell, just the MSL was awesome. I mean, um, it's a whole different environment, a uh, different coach working with SCP and and Paul Adams, um, Faik Davids, um, who else was we all, pretty much all staff, or whatever. But they they were they were class and you know very welcoming, and I, I loved the the energy that they brought. Um, but I think the, the the most important thing that stands out for me during the MSL was uh, just playing with the the 
so-called the big names or I'll, I'll, you know, the international players, uh, likes of Quinny and Dale and Wahab and Asivali, just to name a few. Um, just it was such a great, great experience to play with them. Just I remember just just a simple thing was watching Quinny bat from the other side. Um, I think it might have, it might have been against uh, the Josie Stars, where I think he got like forty from like a few couple of balls, like mm. ten balls or something like that. And and just the way he bats is just just remarkable. And I remember I just I remember but watching uh, Liam Livingston from the other side, uh, just giving him one, and he was hitting the ball out the park with such ease. It, it just takes so much pressure pressure off you as a player. You can just hop along and you know get yourself in and get the feel of it and soak up that energy and the and the atmosphere of the crowd. And the, we had such good crowds in Cape Town, and it was just such a such a great experience. And and I think it just I think you you, you get to a, to a stage where you you know you you're young and you you just you really embrace the the opportunity. And you almost forget the fa- you know how to really perform at that level with all that that pressure or the the intensity that the 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 step up of the MSL brought, and uh, with those guys batting with those guys, it just took the, all of that away a little bit, and it just made me you know soak it in and yeah. just you know stick to my process and just stick to what the team needed the most, and yeah, it was an awesome experience, and I, I think it just. Taught me so much that it, and uh, you know, I grew as a player quite a lot during the MSL. Not just my game, I think, but just mentally and and how to soak up that energy and that that the atmosphere of a lot of people watching me. Yeah, awesome. The guys, you guys are getting agitated in the comments. I'm going to start asking the questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to apologize to you beforehand, Marcus. If there's some things that are repeated a little bit, but I mean, I think a lot of guys have come in during the show, so. Um, Hope you don't mind yeah. that. But let's start with Ravi Reddy over here. Which format of the game do you enjoy the most? And red ball or white ball? Um, white ball creates obviously so much more entertaining with crowds and people that come in. Um, but I think my favorite format is probably red ball cricket. Okay, awesome. Okay, let's go to cricket cricket. That's his name. With Yanaman, your teammate, as his picture, profile picture. Who is the most dangerous bowler to face in domestic cricket? The most dangerous. Um, it's quite a quite a tough question. Um, so many, so many good bowlers. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a lot of there's a lot of good bowlers. Um, I think. Yo, I'm not actually sure to be honest with you. Um, there was quite a there was a new guy that came onto the scene, uh, left armer from uh, from the Warriors. Uh, I think his surname's Tate. Um, he was quite difficult to face, quite a good bowler, um, mm. one day cricket. Um, and then, yeah, I think Red Bull cricket, yeah, there's, there's a lot of guys with so many, so many good skills. But I think the toughest guy I faced was probably Dwayne Pretorius on the Wanderers, on the slope. That was probably the toughest yeah. guy to face. Yeah, what, what makes him difficult? Is it his, um, his accuracy or, or what is it? Because a lot of people don't get to know those insights into the bowler. Yeah, he's very accurate. So if there's a bit of assistance on the wick in the wickets, uh, it's quite 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 a difficult guy to face because he's yeah, it's not it doesn't give you much to score. So yeah, yeah it tests your technique every every ball. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, with regards to growing up, who is your favorite batsman growing up? Um, I had I had, I had a couple of guys. Um, I obviously um, watched a guy like Jock Callis play. Um, uh, Guy like A.B. de Villiers, um, J.P. Dumini, and then a couple of guys from other countries uh, like Kumar Sangakara is probably my favourite. Um, and I'd probably say Kevin Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So um, let's, that ties into the next question. What type of batsman do you see yourself as? A more of a T20 or longer format batsman? I know you said which format is the same, but which one, what type of batsman do you see yourself as? Um, I'd probably say more four day, four day batter. Um, obviously T Twenty cricket, you have to score a bit quicker or whatever. But uh, four day cricket is probably the more the type of batter I am. Yes, I might be quite expansive or aggressive in my approach, um, but it's still the same fundamentals and you know building and innings and batting longer. And I just I think I just score a bit quicker than most people because I try. I just, you know, if the bowler does miss his mark or whatever, I tend to to feed on that and look to, you know, uh, score boundaries. I'm pretty much a boundary hitter. 
But yeah. I'd probably say yeah, four. I'd probably look to. I'd probably say more a longer a longer version of the game. Awesome. So here's another one from Sadiq. It's a bit of a tough one, but do you think you have done justice to your talent so far? We always thought you should have scored more hundreds. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> yeah, look, it's uh, it sounds like my coach. <laughs> it's something easy. <laughs> to bear, right? uh, my coach gets so annoyed with me because I literally just get to 70, 80 and then I end up doing something very silly. But um, yeah, it's something it's something that is quite uh, that I'm aware of. Um, you know, I haven't done myself justice. Um, I think I got about, I think I got six half centuries last season in the four-day campaign. Um, and they were all big half centuries. They were all in the 70s and the 80s. Um, and I did I did end up, you know, giving it a wave, soft dismissal. So I haven't done myself justice. Um, something mm. that I'm working on, you know, looking to just stay a bit more patient in those times and looking to make bigger scores, which is obviously the goal. Um, Yes, I do naturally score quicker uh, at a higher striker, but that's not really something that I'm bothered about. It's just something that naturally happens. Okay, cool, awesome. And with regards to a time frame, uh, what are your goals and for your aspirations? Um, for time being, I'm just taking it game by game. Obviously, we all have a dream to play for South Africa. Um, mm -hmm. That is still the dream, and I'm not giving up on the dream. Um, but for now, as a short-term goal, I just want to make sure that I do well every game I play and just not really take anything for granted. Um, I just want to put performances on the board. And, 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 and I think if I do that well and I can you know, make a few more hundreds, um, I think it will take care of itself and maybe the opportunity will one day arise for, for high honours okay, if awesome. I'm lucky enough. Yeah, awesome. Um, if you had a choice, where in the batting lineup would you like to bat? I think I know the answer, but I'll let you answer it. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to say that I'd probably look to bat to that three or four match now. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. My trivia knowledge is a little bit good. <laughs> that's because you've interviewed, <laughs> me, interviewed me before. That's why. I think. <laughs> Different batters have different formats for different formats. Do you follow someone or his, temp or his template? Well, that's an interesting question, actually. Sorry, can you repeat the question? It just broke up. Uh, different batters have different templates for different formats. Do you have someone or a temp or his template or someone that you follow? Um, no, so, so, so I'd probably say I've got different game plans for each format. Mm. Um, so I, I don't know much. Everyone is probably different. So I've got it written down for each format, like the way I'd like to play, different scoring options for different bowlers, and what I'd like to do, uh, or I like to achieve. Or that would probably be my template. Um, but yeah, I do different ones for each format. Um, mm. Different game plans, different you know ways of looking at looking yeah. to score or whatever the cases. So something that I've noticed, and I'm going to tie my question into this question, because something I've noticed that in the MSL as well is you play you, you play quite well against spin. Those 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 fancy paddles that you do is, is top notch. I really enjoy watching them. So, um, do you enjoy playing against spin more than pace, or what do you prefer? Um, it doesn't really matter to be honest with you. I don't really see it like that. I just hmm. you know you can't really. There's not really one you prefer. Um, but I just. Yeah, I, I think those little fancy shots and stuff are just the adrenaline that goes. <laughs> just pumping too much, I think. I end up doing too many of them sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I probably can't really say I prefer one to the other. Yeah, because I mean, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna one of the guys that I really enjoy watching play as a youngster at at Western Province, Bonga Makaka. I don't know if you've heard of him, but um, it's someone that I see. A lot of similarities between the two of you. So I'm actually going to tell him he must speak to you, actually, um, because I think you can teach him a hell of a lot as a youngster. Um, how do you prepare before games? Uh, Mark Rum was on the show and said that he was started to have nets. Wait, wait, wait. Started to have nets on game day, which has helped him. Do you net on game day? Yeah, so it depends how I feel, to be honest. Um, obviously, I'll hit balls during the week and the day before the, the game. And then... Um, on the morning, it depends if it depends to be honest with you. So it depends how I felt the day before. If I feel like I could just top up a little bit, I would. Um, mostly white ball cricket, I do prefer to just top up, uh, you know, a few hits, maybe 
20 balls or 30 balls before the game. Um, I just like to just hit a few and just get my feet going, get my eyes going a little bit. And I think it does help just hitting a bit before the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one, because I wanted to ask you about your time with uh, SA Emerging Sun and captaining that side was, was quite remarkable that you did that. Do you enjoy that role of being a captain? Yeah, it, it's been something I've been quite used to since a young age. So it's mm. not something that I haven't been, um, you know, haven't really done. I was fortunate enough to captain the Dolphins in the last uh, six or last five uh, uh, four-day games uh, towards the end of the season. And we ended up winning two and I think losing one, drawing two. So that was that was quite a good experience for me. But I, I reckon, you know, I do enjoy captaincy and if 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 it is required then it's something I'll grasp with both hands and you know just give it give it everything that I can to be honest how much how serious do you take your bowling do you have some weakness under your belt do you think bowling can improve your chance of highest honors uh, a lot of people a lot of players have a lot of would have a different opinion to me um, about my bowling um, especially my teammates they all think it's it's, it's it's so far behind that I'm in front. Um, I think my bowling is really average. Um, it's something I could probably work on for. <laughs> it's something I can work on, you know, probably whenever, you know, I get the opportunity because I do bowl some for the off spin. Um, but to be honest with you, I just focus on my batting and try to be a top order batter. Cool. Awesome. Um, Ravi wants to know what golf handicap you are at the moment. Uh, I'm a 10 handicap. <laughs> I don't even understand those things. because like, My friend is a golfer and he keeps on trying to teach me about these things. I go to the driving range and I eat a few balls. Uh, but that's about it. Eh? Like, <laughs> I don't understand all this handicaps and stuff. Have you been to World of Golf already in Johannesburg? Um, I was there once, but that was quite a long time ago. I think I was only oh. like 16 or 17. I can't remember. Sure, my breath was taken away when I went there. I was like, wow, it's like a theme park for golf. <laughs> <laughs> football or rugby if you had to pick another sport uh rugby cool so who do you support rugby wise now obviously you you've moved around quite a bit so <laughs> who's your team i used to support the lions but all my all my favorite players and guys that play there don't, don't play there anymore so i probably say I've, I've jumped ship a little bit i'm supporting the sharks now <laughs> Awesome. Uh, this guy was just no, let you know that he is a fan of yours. Um, not, I'm a, this guy is a South African fan from, from India. I don't know if you can see the comments on your side. Um, uh, it's quite are, small. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this one here, the Proteus are currently figuring, figuring out the next captain for the team. Are you thinking about potentially captaining the, that team one day? Um, yeah, it's quite a... It's quite a long way away, I reckon. Um, but obviously, if you it's, if you get the opportunity to do that, it's something you can't really turn down. Mm. Um, you've had some time in England, obviously playing in England. Um, can you maybe first start off by telling me about that experience over there? And then you can lead into this, which is, what are your views about Colpac players returning to South Africa? Is it going to intensify the four-day competition particularly? Um, let me just see the phone. Um, corporate players returning. Um, I think that's. I think that'll be the best thing for our game. Um, because it just improves our standard of uh, franchise or domestic cricket. Um, I mean, if you look at the names of the players that are playing Colpac at the moment, uh, they they arguably, you know, a team that could, you know, a lot of the guys could still probably play for the Proteas. There are a lot of good players. Um, uh, yeah, it's pretty much. Anything I can say about it, I don't really yeah. know what to say else. Yeah, and with regards to your time in England, or what was that like um, playing over there? Um, what did you pick up in that lessons? It was, it was quite an interesting uh, experience because of a little swinging ball, underprepared wickets, the ball moves around, and the guy balls 80 kilometers an hour and he's 60 years old, and the <laughs> ball moves around and there's chirps flying everywhere. And, yeah, just you know, as, especially someone like myself, where I play quite attacking and stuff, um, I had to go very play very different or play very differently when I was in the UK because, uh, yes, even though I played a bit more attacking, I still had to, you know, your your team relies on you so much that 
you know if you if you do well your team does well and if you don't do well your team doesn't really do well so there's a lot more responsibility when you play so i obviously try to just you know make sure i value my wicket a bit more and i think that's probably the main thing that taught me when i was in the uk yeah so we've got a nice um tongue-in-cheek one from lewis deploy you want to know have you ever struck at the less than 80 in innings <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I remember there's plenty of times I've, stri- I've had a strike in less than 80. <laughs> so, um, on our episode of Legends with Ravi last night that we have, um, we spoke about Neil McKenzie and talking about with regards to him and his superstitions that he had. Um, do you have any superstitions before you go back or before you play? Uh, no, I don't have any superstitions, but I do have like a lot of routi- uh, things that fall into routine. Um, I like to have clean pads uh, and clean shoes before I go and bat. Um, and then I'd like, I'd always start my, I'd put my pads on uh, right before and then my left on. And then I'd always start at the bottom to the top. And yeah, that's pretty much it, to be honest. It's just awesome. a bit of routine, routine. yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, to the end of this conversation, I just want to get into again lockdown, but more of a fun thing. Uh, a quick fire, basically, not really a quick fire. This is a discussion or chat of what you're getting up to in lockdown, besides obviously your fitness and your cricket. Um, what sort of fun things you are doing? Um, I've been, I've had a whole different approach to most people on uh, in the lockdown. Um, I've been with my missus uh, on the farm, so I've been literally fortunate enough to you know work there you know keep busy go for runs in the mornings um and you know stay nice and active and busy so my mind's been a bit off the lockdown there because life is still up to you know still normal that Mm. side so that's that's been a a massive plus um but yeah that's i haven't haven't really done much just just worked on my fitness um just itching to get back to playing a bit of cricket again so not trying these challenges and trying cooking challenges, etc. Like your coach Ashwell Prince was making good sisters and can roll. No, I, I, was I, 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 rolls. I don't know if you saw that. I, I've seen all the I've seen all the challenges and all the the different things people have been doing to keep themselves busy. So I, I, when when you go onto social media, it's, it's quite amazing what you see and what people get up to. Um, yeah. I remember I remember seeing I think uh, Jason Smith and George Linda having a little challenge. Uh, um, the lockdown challenge or whatever it was quite quite impressive what they were doing so but um for me I, i'd like to think i'm my cooking's improved a heck of a lot my missus might not uh um agree with it but uh i reckon i reckon i see myself as quite a pretty de- or pretty decent cook what sort of dishes did you try this during this lockdown oh my mom's famous meatballs definitely <laughs> tried them did uh i make a mean chicken curry Best believe that all my mates will will be able to vouch for me, um, and yeah, being Afrikaans, we all love a bride, don't we? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Any tips for the bride? Because Andrew Nokia told me that I must never bride with coals ever again. Because <laughs> I told him that I bride with the coals and the beaver, and he told me, "What are you doing? Wood? That's the way to go." Well, any tips for yeah. for bride? Always, always. If it's a if you're using charcoal, um, that is the first issue. Um, make sure you start your fire with uh, with wood, and then put briquettes over that, and that should last you. It won't be too hot, and it will give you the duration of all the meat that needs to be fried. And uh, my fa- my trick I'll give is to put lemon juice on your on your steaks and your lamb chops. Basically, like a little brine that softens up a bit. Eh? I'm uh, not sure. Just I was like the taste. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything on Netflix? Have a Netflix playlist that you want to share, or anything on? I don't know if you have a lot good reception at the farm or whatever. But um, um... yeah, um, Netflix. My my. I think my my favorite's been uh, uh, Vikings and Banshee. No, oh, Banshee's great. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it i'll never forget like i'm a massive movie series fan right so um i studied film as well a bit so like i look into a lot of details but the opening episode of banshee when the um jail doors open man 
I automatically thought that when you see the, the railings, etc., it's going to start within jail. So, like, something's going to happen. Because they, they speak about, if you look at the description, it's about the convict, etc., whatever. So, I thought the whole thing's going to start in jail. And then um, it panned down, and you see the guy coming out of jail. So, I was like, oh, what's happening here? And then from that moment, I was I was hooked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I want to thank you, Scott, cool because you, you get hooked on the first episode, which, is, which yeah. is quite rare in a series. Yeah, so yeah, because I've been recently I got into Breaking Bad, so I'm like binging that at the moment. I'm like, I was like, wow, this thing is insane. And it just gets better and better as the episodes go by. Um, anyway, um, that's what we all we have for you guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, Marcus, you have any message to the Cricket Fanatics fans out there? Can everyone please email Cyril and ask him if we can start training again? Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. But okay, so guys, thanks a lot for this lockdown series and tuning in. We're going to be putting it on our website so you guys can go back and watch it. Remember to click on the playlist. We have like 40, this is episode 42, so you can go back and binge all the other episodes. We do have the categories on our website as well for you to go check in the video section. Um, tomorrow we'll be interviewing Miguel Petorius, so it's going to be another in interesting one that we're going to bring, another domestic talent. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Um, just give the guys some insight into where they can follow you on social media and which social media platforms you enjoy the most. Um, everyone can follow me on Instagram at MarcusJ65 and on Twitter. Uh, it's exactly the same. Cool. Awesome. Shout a lot for the interview, and I really enjoyed it, and I'll speak to you again soon. Oh, thank you so much. Cheers, guys. See you.